Ayan, Queen of the Orient is Manila. We all know that. It is an absolutely amazing place. And way back in 1938, they made a video from Manila. And that is the one we're going to see today. It looks so clean. It looks so amazing. I love the big trees all over near to the boulevards and the avenues. The hustle and the bustle of the city was amazing. Na Escolda, Intramuros, talaga. And I especially like how everybody was wearing uh, proper clothing, you know. And like now, uh, I see too many people just wearing a sandal or something like that. And I love when the Kalesa drivers are wearing proper uniforms with proper slacks, no? I think we missed that today. And I hope this will come back again. So guys, let's have a look at Manila, the Queen of the Pacific in 1938. Manila, Queen City of the Pacific. By the Screen Traveler. Manila. Capital and largest city of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Rise on the shore of the bay into which the Spaniards sailed in 1570, and where in 1898 Admiral Dewey achieved one of the greatest naval victories in history, the Battle of Manila Bay. Right. As headquarters for American commercial interests in the Orient, Manila has been transformed from a sleepy Spanish town into a modern city, into island ships. Oh, look at the that. archipelago of some 7,000 islands, berthed along the caves of the Pasig River that flows through the center of the city. Right. Now it's nice to see the ships there, and we got these little uh, local ships down below, huh? You see that? No. It was very modern. When you think about it, this was 1938, huh? Fly both the American and Philippine flag. Oh yeah. For the of Commonwealth course. government is still under the protection and advice of the United States. Right. Much of the local trading is carried on in cascos, flat bottom boats which are poled oh, the many canals and waterways of Manila. Oh that's what they call them, cascos? I didn't know that. So these are these look like the Esteros somewhere in Binondo and around that area, huh? Yeah, and is that coconuts is got there, I think? has its family, whose life is spent beneath its thatched roof of bamboo or palm. Veritable water gypsies in water a gypsies? climate that is kind to all. <laughs> Manila is really three cities in one. Old Tondo, home okay. of the Philippine masses. Oh, there you have it. It's the Jones Bridge again with all the ornaments, right? But look, there's not that many uh, lampposts as we have it today, right? And they don't have... Um, all the the lights on it right it's just like one post with one lamp on top or one light on top unlike now no it looks like a disney fairy tale basically from the uh, what is this beauty and the beast right? all right now what i do miss though are these ornaments you see on the front of the bridge here and the uh, right in front of us right now no i kind of missed that 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 was nice i like that sayang but okay lang naman at least man, it looks very very good right now it's very instagrammable right so um what was he saying? The old Tondo? Okay. One of American development and Intramuros. Intramuros? The old city of the Spaniards. Yes. The last, built on the south shore at the mouth of the Pasig River, is surrounded by two and a half miles of walls, which begun in 1590, were right. for centuries bulwarks against invasion. It's still Intramuros. The circling the wall wow. was filled in for sanitary reasons by the Americans and is today a drill ground, a recreation area and the golf course oh yeah it's still a golf course on today although they don't have the military there anymore it's gone right it's moved out to somewhere else so they don't do that but uh the walls are still there well remember this is before the second world war no so we might see some things which were destroyed in second world war like jones bridge and other things right um but it still looks looks pretty cool huh for 1938 i think Bastions are excellently preserved. Yes. They have withstood even earthquakes, which at times laid ruin the old city. Right. Yeah, and marching troops, huh? In the bastion of the Royal Gate is Manila's famous aquarium. Oh, aquarium? There was an aquarium during those times? I had no idea, huh? I gotta look that up. If anybody's been to an aquarium way back, please let me know because I don't know about any aquariums back in the old days. 
Uh, what do we have here? Puerta del Parian. Oh yeah, that's a famous uh, entrance. Parian Gate is the most notable of the city's five. Right. Which until 1852 were all closed at night. Oh, the close them at the night. Walls, little has changed since the days of Spanish rule. Right. The main shopping. Wow, look at that. Chiefly catering to tourists. Presents a picture of busy It looks like that today, doesn't it? Traffic. Well, except the traffic is so much different, huh? I mean, look, inside in some words today, there's hardly any traffic, no? But look at those calesas everywhere, the um, the horses everywhere, cars, it's all mixed up, you know? It's like halo halo nai. Oh, special halo halo, de ba? But it looks nice, so imagine there were so many people going to Intram Wars because that was really the place you went to go shopping and stuff like that, huh? And then of course it moved to um, Escolta later on, right? Seeing balconies and grill windows yeah. are reminders of old Spain. Wow, look at the dressing! The Franciscan church, more than 200 years old, is one of the many places of worship within Walled Manila. Right, there's so many the churches. the Spaniards converted the Filipinos into the only Christian peoples in the Orient right. long before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. That's true, no? So, Philippines has actually been Christian longer than the United States, no? Because US just only became Christians once the, uh, the Europeans arrived, no? And that was uh, very, very slowly, no? it was like a drip, drip. But the Spanish were already here in 15 something and were already converting Filipinos to become Christians. That's absolutely true, huh? Well, what I do like, and I keep saying this when I watch these old videos, is the way the people dress. You know, it's so much better. It looks nice. It's, it's not like just somebody in a sando like today, the bar, or, you know, they pull up and they show their belly hanging out, right? I really don't like that. I like when we see the Kalesa drivers wearing nice, um, maybe not uniform, but at least a barong or something like that, a uh, nice uh, pantalones, the bar. And I think that would be so much better if they really do that, especially when tourists come here. We see many other countries in the old cities that they actually do dress up. They actually do have uniforms. And of course, when tourists will take pictures and post them on Instagram or Facebook, on ganda, de ba? So, siyempo naman, excited yung ibang tao and they want to come here. And especially right now, we need more tourists to come to the Philippines as soon as the pandemic opens. So, why not, uh, in Tomorrow's administration, why not implement rules about uniforms everywhere inside in Tomorrow's? Yeah, and they're going to church, huh? All dressed up. What's she selling there? Fl flowers? I think so. Ayun, they're, they're covering it. Covering their hair, no? Have you noticed that? They also do that in Spain, of course, and Italy, no? When they go into the church. I don't think they do that anymore, do they? they bodies with huge leaves of cloth made from pineapple plants. Right. And a long skirt, the train of which is tucked into the front of the belt. Is the typical dress of Filipino women. It looks nice, huh? Facing quiet McKinley Square is the cathedral. McKinley Filipino Square. Wait, so that was called McKinley Square at that time. All oh, right, there, there we have the cathedral. But the cathedral looks better today, huh? Byzantine style, a little more than 60 years ago, as a successor to other cathedrals destroyed by right. earthquakes. Right, they got destroyed by earthquakes. On I remember the north that. Shore of the okay. River is Tondo, right. the oldest and most densely populated quarter. Here, the masses live. And okay. here also is the modern business area of the city. Right. In this section are the greatest contrasts. Fine skyscraper office buildings and banks. Wow. Along crumbling thick wall ancient structures. Look at those buildings. Broad, straight streets and narrow Looks crooked ones. nice. Canals teeming with boat activity and... So basically, I can see here Escolta, I see Santa Cruz, no? I, I do recognize a few of the buildings, they're still there. So I'm pretty sure that some of you guys know about this place much more than me. I, I know that building is being torn down right now. I forgot what it's called, right at the corner of Santa Cruz, huh? in front of the church. But um, leave me a comment, tell me what the buildings are. I know some of them, but there's a few of them that I'm missing. With modern traffic. Hmm. Traffic in all parts of Tondo oh. is heavy. And it's difficult to control. With swiftly moving autos, abreast, oh, look at that. The two-wheeled native conveyances drawn by active Philippine ponies. Yeah, the horses here are very different from other countries, huh? The native horses. Hey, wait, look at the... Look at the um, traffic light. It's got one, two, three, four lights. 
Okay, right now we only have three, right? We have the green, of course, the yellow or orange, they call it sometimes, and then uh, red, no? I wonder what the fourth is. And it looks so amazing. It looks the great with those old cars. Oh! Is the famed Escolta. Yeah, it's a congested Escolta. narrow thoroughfare five blocks wow. long, which parallels the river between Plaza Moraga and Plaza Goiti. On it, face nice. most of the fine shops and department stores of the city. The Storia Tea Room. What do you have on the other side? That's a bazaar. Ideal bazaar. Another important thoroughfare is Rizal Avenue. Ah, uh -huh. Rizal Avenue. Named yes. in memory of the great hero martyr, Dr. Jose State. Rizal, who was executed by the Spaniards in 1896, two years before the coming of the Americans. Yeah. There are many arcaded sidewalks in Manila. For although sunstroke is unknown, it is more pleasant than... Oh, just look at this. I see almost everybody of the males, huh? Look at the males. Look at the guys. Now, look at this. You see a lot of them are actually wearing a suit. And it's so hot in the Philippines, right? But they're still wearing suits during those times. Although they all look like either uh, khaki or white. I'm guessing it's khaki. It's just because we can't really see the colors. But imagine wearing a two-piece suit outside uh, when you go shopping. I mean, that was really how it was before, right? Today, even in the office, we don't really wear two-piece suits anymore in the Philippines, right? And I like the dresses of the ladies everywhere. It just looks nice, you know? I mean, I, I miss these times. I wonder if it was like this in other countries as well, but I think it was because I've seen some old videos from Denmark and I can see that the way they used to dress, you know, they would have the top hats, right? They would have the, the coats on and everything. It looked uh, very stylish before somehow. Shade during the heat of the day. Each section of the city has its market where right. practically everything used by the Filipinos can be purchased. In the Yanko market, a bazaar devoted exclusively to Philippine products. Okay. Almost any locally made article can be secured. I wonder what that is. Oh, I like the hat he's wearing, huh? <laughs> yeah, and local pro products, huh? We got the brooms, we got the hats, the baskets, everything is there, huh? Oh, there's a couple of nuns buying. That's got to be so hot. The two-wheel Karomata and Karomata. Okay. are the principal conveyances of the Filipinos. These carriages accommodate two and six persons, respectively. Okay. Little straw protectors are placed <laughs> on the wheel when the passenger mounts or descends. Nice. So that's made of straw, the one she's hawake. Now see, he just took it off there. Wow, nice. Wow, Kalabao. The main beast of burden is the Kalabao. There are more than two and a quarter million of these patient, hard-working animals in the island. That's a lot, huh? And their slow pace is appreciated. That's a lot. Imagine two and a quarter million Kalabaos, huh? Now, I'm just wondering. I just saw there is a... Uh, a uh, horse carriage there in the back of the Kalabau, no? I can't read what it says, but I kind of have a feeling that it might be like a milk delivery or something like that. Masters, in addition to modern motor transportation, the horse-drawn bus still holds an important Ooh. place. So this is a horse-drawn bus, huh? Okay, so I'm guessing the one standing up there, that's the conductor, and I see in the back the Tambia, so... This was really the time where everything was changing from horse-drawn carriages to automobiles to electrical uh, carriages to uh, gasoline-fueled cars. You know, everything was just changing at that time. It must, been, it must have been very exciting to live at that time, to, to experience all these changes. But on the other hand, things are also changing today. It's just maybe not as obvious as during those times. Look at that, they're sitting there in the horse-drawn bus, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that was a car. Oh, Jones Bridge again with the Mata Filipinas, huh? 
Nice. The Pasig River is spanned by four bridges. Jones Bridge, right. surmounted Ooh, by Filipino, Filipino figures, Filipinas. is the newest. Nice. The graceful arch stands on the site of the old bridge of Oh, it Spain. looks so good. Look at that. Those dolphin sculptures. I just wish we would put them back again, huh? As I said before, look at the lamps. They're very different from those. Well, they're not very different, but they're different from those we have today because there's more lamps on the post themselves. These are just singular lamps, right? I can see another Mata Filipina down the other end. And don't forget, you can watch my video from about a month ago where the last two Mata Filipinas were placed on Jones Bridge. So all four of them are now back on Jones Bridge, although three of them are replicas and just one is an original. Of course, another two originals are in front of the Court of Appeals, Deba. Ayan, I really love those dolphin sculptures, ka no? The spacious and dignified post office overlooks the river and faces the, oh, yeah. the Plaza Lawton where the Burgos Drive begins. Still looks the same, huh? The Burgos Drive, a magnificent wide boulevard, follows part of the sunken gardens of the old wall city moat. Oh, okay, Here yeah. In the middle That's stands right. the superb legislative building. Right, the old legislative building. At a cost of $2 million. Wow. Today, it is the seat of the new Commonwealth government. In well, of course, that is not any longer the legislative building. This is already the National Museum and the Senate and the Congress have moved out from that building. I think that's a bit sayang. I love this building and I love how you can impress uh, to the people and to foreign dignitaries to have this building as your legislative building. Now, we, we also have a very old building in Denmark, a castle, and it's so impressive when you see this. This is where our government is, you know. So I'm a bit sayang eh. Over the course laid out around the walls of old Manila, modern Manila golf plays course. golf. Done. residential section where many beautiful homes and the best hotels are situated is Ermita. Oh yeah. The famous Manila Hotel Correct. overlooking the bay is one of the finest air-conditioned hotels in the tropics. Wow, it still looks good. In Ermita are also the buildings of the University of the Philippines. Right. A government institution which embraces wide fields of learning and offers excellent educational opportunities to all. Contrasting greatly with the narrow irregular dirt streets of Spain's Manila, mm -hmm are the wide, well-paved wow. avenues and boulevards of the American city. See, it's so Great white. Oh, I like the trees. The avenues, where where are the trees today? Flowering trees line other arteries. Dewey Boulevard, Dewey Boulevard, the pride of Manila, is built upon reclaimed land along the shores of the bay. Oh, so you see, guys, they were already doing reclamation projects at that time. Because Dewey Boulevard, which is, of course, Rojas Boulevard today, is already built in 1938 on reclaimed land from Manila Bay. So uh, for me, this looks beautiful again. Look, it's not too cluttered. Look here in the middle of the street. We got some lamp posts. We got uh, the palm trees. Of course, they're much taller today, but there's a lot more palm trees, I think, way back there in 1938 than today, as far as I can see. And yes, there were sand beaches right in front of Rojas Boulevard before. Right in front of uh, Rojas Boulevard or Dewey Boulevard, there were actually sand beaches near to uh, Raja Suleiman Plaza and also here at the Luneta in front of it. The, it you could actually sit there and enjoy uh, the bay, no? There were small cafes, there were some sand beaches that you could actually uh, use, no? At that time. For the wow. of which the city boasts. Look at that house, huh? Ganda. Ganda Tanlaga is that of the American High Commissioner. The spacious house with its gardens and patio is often the scene of social splendor. Nice. Situated on the north bank of the Pasig River are the executive offices and homes right. of the President of the Philippine Commonwealth. Malacan Young, In no? a mansion built as the suburban residence for Spanish governors, a Philippine chief executive now directs the home government of his island commonwealth, an archipelago fast changing from a dreamy Spanish colony to a modern agricultural, industrial, and independent country. Oh, got the color bow again, huh? 
Oh, it's finished? All right. Oh, I love these old movies from way, way before. It looks so clean, it looks so stylish. I really miss the trees we see along the avenues or the boulevards. Why do you trees like that? Because I'm in Vietnam. In Vietnam, there are so many trees. No? Uh, they're lining the boulevards and the avenues and it gives this atmosphere, this relaxing uh, feeling. You know, when you see all these big trees along the streets, it's really, really nice. I wish we could have more of those back. I know the DENR has planted some new coconut trees at Manila Bay and I think that's a good start. We need more green in the city of Manila and of course Mayor Isco Moreno is putting up a lot of green places everywhere. You guys know that from my other videos. So can you please leave me a comment below and tell me what did you think about Manila in 1938 and which of the places did you recognize? Which places have you actually been to, especially when we're talking about Escolta and Intramuros? No? So again, guys, as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click the bell button huh? and subscribe. Kayo, huh? OK, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and of course the bell button so you'll be notified when we have new videos for you.